Marcus Finley is a 2025 NFL prospect staying at 6'3", 310 pounds. He's a first-team all-conference left tackle going into his fifth year of eligibility this 2024 season. I asked Marcus to sit down with me to talk about his career thus far and his plans after the season. How you doing, Marcus? I'm all right. How about you? I'm doing great, man. So, Marcus, first question, what is your recruitment story and how did you end up at Bluffton? Um, so, my story is, I'll just give you the whole rundown. So, I broke my femur in eighth grade, um, which is like your thigh bone, people that really don't know it. So that sidelined me for a couple of years. Then I joined the football team in high school my junior year. Um, I played D-line. I was absolutely terrible. I was unathletic. I was weak. I was trash. Then my senior year, I took the weight room seriously. Um, and then they moved me to guard. And then I played every game. I got all conference. And then next thing I know, I'm getting recruited for football and track because I also did track too. And I was a pretty good thrower. And then I went on a couple of visits to Milliken, I think it was my first visit. Um, then we went to Franklin. And then we went to Wilmington and then came to Bluffton. So my first option wasn't Bluffton, unfortunately. But uh, their program, really helped me out because my GPA was really low coming out of high school. So they kind of helped me out. And so that's how I got here. Why did you choose Bluffton? Um, I chose Bluffton because, like I said, like I really had no other options. Their discovery program really helped me out. Like I said, my GPA wasn't the best coming out of high school. So it was either go to a community college for a couple of years and then go to wherever I wanted to go but I just wanted to play right now. So the discovery program helped me out. I just had to write a paper and have an interview with our advisor, Miss Jackie, and she helped me out with all that. How would you describe the difference or jump from high school ball to college ball from the O-line perspective? I would say it took me a couple of weeks to get used to it because I was just going against so many great guys my freshman year. Um, if you look back at it my freshman year, I went against three all-conference D linemen. So that's how I would say they helped me out to where I am now. But high school, we played so many great players. We were 6A. In Indiana, it's 6A. So, I mean, I was going against D1 athletes every week. I, uh, we played one game on TV against Carmel. Their D linemen, their nose was the number one prospect in the state of Indiana, he committed to Penn State. I held him to one tackle. I got player of the week that week. So, like I said, I was just going against great talent every week. And so, I don't want to say it kind of got worse when I got here, but you can just tell the difference as far as talent level when you're going against D1 guys and then, unfortunately, like D3 guys. I'm not trying to bash any D3 guys, but obviously you can tell the difference from D1 to D2 and 10 to D3. When did you start getting NFL traction, or when did you find out, like, hey, like, I actually have a shot at this? And what has been, what has it been like for you talking to NFL scouts? Man, so I would say last year, like, I was just trying to play ball, you know. I knew I had a fifth year because of COVID year. I was really just trying to be all conference. Really, I had really, like, no goals of playing in the NFL. I always – said that I just want a chance. But I mean, when we're all little kids, we all want to play. That's our dreams is we want to make it to the NFL. So I would say that it really became a reality. Last year I did a pro day and then we were just going just to go. Like nobody invited us. Nobody wanted to see us. When I mean us, I mean me, our receiver, Ethan Berenger, and our right tackle, David Warfield. Nobody wanted to see us. We was just going for the experience is what our head coach told us is that it was an experience and that it's a lightning bolt of a chance if we get anything. But to me, I took that kind of personal because it's still a chance. Like he said, there's a lightning bolt of a chance. So there's still a chance that I could get something out of it. So I kind of took that as like a challenge. And I went there and did what I got to do. I went with that mindset, like it's time to get paid. That's been my whole motto this year is it's time to get paid. So. That's how that happened, and I would say that's really where it flipped. I did the pro day, 
was it, last spring, and then our coach has just been telling me about all the teams that really wanted were interested in me and really wanted to talk to me. I'm I don't know if I can't talk to him. I just go over there and introduce him, introduce myself to him. Like I don't know what all I can and can't do. You know, I'm I'm still a rookie. You know, I don't know what I can and can't do. I'm not trying to put myself in any kind of jeopardy and risk my chances of making it to the next level. But I say it's been kind of surreal. You know, like I said, we all talk about making it, and then I'm right there. Hopefully, I get a chance to. So you kind of recovered this, but what was your mindset coming into your last year of eligibility? Like I said, it's it's time to get paid. You know, I. I have a chance to be a five-time all-conference football player that's never been done in history because if you really go – if you think about it, if you're a D1 and D1 in your all-conference, you go to the next level, basically. And D2, kind of the same thing. But D3, you really haven't, haven't gotten any chances to get five-time because of COVID. So – like I said, I've been doing this since I was a freshman. So that was one of my goals get, going into it. Um, another one was trying to have the most games played in Bluffton football history. I have to play every game of the season, and I will get it by one game. So that's another one of my motivations. And like I said, it's, it's time to get paid. What has Bluffton taught you in your five years here? <laughs> uh... I'd always say Bluffton taught me. It, it helped me grow up. I, I'd say it helped me grow up and helped me see things in life. Because my freshman year, I was starting. I was away from home. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just focused on football. I really wasn't focused on grades. And then that next semester, I was on academic probation. So I really had to grow up, um, get my act together, focus on what I wanted to do in life, and focus on that student athlete part, how a student, you're a student first, and then the athlete doesn't come without the student. So I'd say that's one of the key things that I learned is how to grow up and be more mature. Who is your biggest role model? Uh, I would say my mother. She's 100% my biggest role model. I look into her for everything. I talk to her about everything. I wouldn't be who I am without her and God, of course, but without my mother, I wouldn't be here today, 100%. Um, I have two other siblings and they moved out the house pretty quickly and so it was just me and my mom for the longest and she's been to every game high school and college no matter how far it is she's made it and I, I love her to death for that I like I said I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her I do everything for her I always told her if I get paid, I'm gonna get you a house right next to mine, and we'll be we'll be cool. So I have, I can't in words I can't explain how much I love my mother, and I look up to her for so much. What NFL lineman do you compare your game to? See, that's a great question. I look at all, really, I look at all offensive linemen, no matter what position they play. Scratch that. I looked at tackles, like Tristan Wirfs. Um. Pede Sewell, he's a great one. And then um, – <clears throat> sorry. I looked at them, and then once the whole NFL stuff started to happen, that's when I started looking at guards and centers because, unfortunately, I'm not playing tackle after this. And I'm I'm kind of accepted it. I'm tired of playing tackle now, you know. I'm tired of dealing with them tall, fast guys. Give me a little – give me a little fat guy once in a while. I'll be fine, you know. But I'd say – I always try to pick a couple things from different guys. Um, the Kansas City game, I was really studying their ta their feet. I always say slow feet don't eat. I say that to our guys now. And if you just watch their feet, like they're they're moving. And I try to work on pad level. I try to see what they do. Not really jumping the snap count, but knowing the snap count, and that can really help you with the pass rush. I like to say I'm a best better pass blocker than run blocker just because I like to say I'm more athletic than most of the guys. But Tristan Wirfs, I mean, he's one of the best in the league. I looked at him, Penesul, his feet, and just knowing where the launch point of the quarterback is because I learned this from our O-line coach. We're not protecting the quarterback. We're protecting the launch point of the quarterback. 
And so it's the quarterback's job to get on that launch point and not – if he doesn't, then he screws up. That's just what I've been taught, and that's really how I try to see my – correct my game from their game. Last question, what are your goals for this season and after our season is over? See, all right. So my goals, I have it written down as my screensaver so I can see it. Every time I look at my phone, every time I get on my phone, I can see it. So some goals I have is five-time all-conference, like I said. I want to be an All-American, but as a lineman, you don't get All-American unless you win games, unfortunately. Um, I want to be first team again. Uh, I want to have a, I want to be a part of a championship team. I think that we have the talent to do that across the board, offense and defense. I feel like we're very talented. Um, I want to have zero sacks allowed from me, and I'm doing good with that right now, you know, knock on wood, you know. But that's just – and get my name out there more and get more exposure and have un, have 32 teams interested in me and coming to see me just so I can make money, basically. That's what it is. That's what it comes down to. Thank you for your time, Marcus. No problem. Thank you.